God bless you guys. God is good. Amen? And so, listen, I just want to share to continue kind of uh, the thought of what Pastor Tommy has been talking about and, you know, uh, our relationship with God, right? And so I'm so encouraged. I, I know that you guys are, and if not, you will be. But in Ephesians chapter 3, if you have your Bibles, you can go there. But if you don't, it's okay. I just want to share something personal with you guys, if I may. And we've been talking about prayer, right? And, and Paul here has a prayer for the church at Ephesus. And, uh, and I love Paul because he, he, you know, he goes right down to the point. And I think this is good. It's going to edify and encourage and maybe even provoke each and every single one of us. But this is my desire for myself and for us as a body of Christ. And in chapter 3 of verse 14, he says this. Paul says, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That's us, right? That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man or in your heart, in the spirit man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love, talking about relationship, right? Rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend or understand with all the saints, all of us, what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church. And this was the prayer for Paul. And if we're going to say anything, Paul was simply saying, hey, listen, my prayer for you is that God would fill your heart not only with himself, but with his love. You know, if we are going to be truthful about anything, if we're going to understand anything, we know that love is a great motivating factor, right? It motivates us to do certain things. It motivates me to love my beautiful wife in such a way because I'm in love with her. And Paul knew this. And he says, hey, I want God to fill your heart. If we could only grasp and understand the love of God, how much he truly loves each and every single one of us. You know, the truth is that he loved us to death, right? He loved us to death. And if we could grasp that, you know, we could begin to be filled, but not only be filled, but here's the amazing thing about the love of God. And when God fills your life, it becomes an overflow, right? It begins to pour out in our lives. And listen, Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, this is what he said. And this was, was motivated Paul. He said, it's the love of Christ that compels me. It's the love of Christ that constrains me or moves me. I do what I do. I live the way I live because I know how much Jesus Christ loved me. That I didn't deserve his love. And while I was yet sinning and living the way I lived, Jesus died for me. And it's that type of love that motivates you or that causes a response. You know, I, when I used to be in boot camp back in the days, you know, or in prison, right? Um, I used to have a brother that he used to tell me all the time. He, brother Raleigh used to say, brother, if you get to know him, you're going to want to praise him. And that is the absolute truth. If you get to know Jesus Christ on a personal level, you can't help but begin to want to praise him. And that is the absolute truth. That is why we here at Hope Alive Church and Pastor Tommy is, is, is urging us to have a personal relationship with the Lord. You know, I, we went to a men's conference yesterday and something that Pastor Jeff said stayed with me. It, it, it really resonated with my heart. And he said, you know, the key to relationships, 
The key to a relationship is investing in it. Right? That's the key to a relationship. It's investing in it. And he said two things, time and priority. When you invest time and priority into a relationship, right, it begins to blossom. It begins to grow. It begins to get nurtured, right? And that's what we want. You see, that we would have that intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, right? Because as we begin to, you know, give the Lord time. Say, I want to spend time with you, Jesus. Not for what you've done for me, but because of who you are. I want to get to know you better. You know, and it's like that with relationships, right? With your parents, with your wife, with your girlfriend, with your friends. The only way you're going to nurture that relationship is if what? You spend time with them. You get to know them. And as you get to know the Lord, you're going to find out how much he loves you. And how much he wants to do things in your life. Fill you with his love. Fill you with his grace. And begin to use your life. You know, it's a sad thing what Tommy was talking about, that young kid. But praise God that Tommy was able to share the love of Christ with him, right? You know, I'm so grateful for that. And, and, and that's my heart for each and every single one of us, that we would grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Because listen, guys, here's the truth. Relationships, they can come and go, right? Ministry can be taken from us. Things that we have can be also taken from us. But guess what? Our relationship that we build with Jesus Christ can never be taken from us, right? And yeah, and that's what we want, right? And you know, it's, it's amazing because we're going to pray right now, you know, and, and I love this because, you know, here's the thing. He's writing to the church at Ephesus, and you know later on in the book of Revelations, Jesus himself said something to the church at Ephesus. He said, I, I know your works, I know you do all these great things, but I have this one thing against you. What did he say? First love. And you know, that happens, right? We get caught up. Life 101, and we can forget. But they had left their first love, their number one priority. And God says, hey, listen, if that's the case, it's okay. Remember from where you have fallen, right? Repent and begin to redo it again. And that's the great thing about us. That's the great thing about the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, we teach the word here at Hope Alive Church. We do, right? And the word of God, it will fuel our inner man. We need that to sustain us every day to grow. That will do it. But guess what? Prayer and praise will ignite the fire. And that's what we want to do. Maybe your fire is not ignited today. And maybe you say, hey, Lord, I need for you to ignite the, my fire by your Holy Spirit. Guess what's going to do it? Prayer and praise. And believe me, when you get to know him on an intimate level, you're going to want to praise him. Pastor Tommy's not going to have to tell you, hey, praise him. No, you're going to want to praise him for who he is and for what he's done in your life. And so listen, we're going to break up right now, and they're going to come up here and sing a song, but we're going to get together in no more than, you know, groups of six, two, three, four, five, six, right where you're at, you know, get with somebody. And listen, this is what we want to pray for. This prayer is a good prayer, Right? That God would fill our hearts with himself, with this love, and that he would become real in our lives and that we would have an intimate relationship with the Lord. And you know, if you don't want to pray, somebody will pray with you. But that's our heart's desire. Is that all right? You guys down with that? Can we do that? Can we get together and pray? All right, so let's do that right now as they lead us in worship. Let's get together in groups and begin to pray for a little while. Invite Pastor Gabriel now. He's going to come and give a quick word. And again, once he's done, he's going to invite you guys to pray and to get into circles. So if you want to get that same circle group or you want to get into a different group, go for it. Um, and, and just really engage in that relationship with God. All right, guys. Um, with an attitude of prayer, I know it's just, it was awesome time right now. I want you guys to join me in prayer. There's a brother in the ministry by the name of Pastor Manny. And we're just praying. Some of you might know he had a, a terrible accident um, this past week. If you guys could join me in prayer as we pray for God to do a miracle. Um, they're saying he's never going to walk again. 
but the doctors um, say one thing, but we know the true physician. Amen? So let's pray. Let's pray for a miracle. Father, we stand as a body right now, Lord, in one accord, Lord, in one mind, Father God, praying for a miracle, Lord. We're, we're praying, Father, for Pastor Manny out there at Living Way, Father. We ask that you do a miracle, that you strengthen his family, Lord, and that right now, Lord, we believe by faith that you're able to touch, Lord. So right now, as, as a body here at Hope Alive, Lord, we ask that you move in a mighty way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do you guys, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you guys believe that God wants to use you guys in a mighty way? Oh, man. I know some of you, like five of you believe that. No, do you guys believe that God wants to use you in a mighty way? Amen. Look at what, look at what 2 Chronicles 16, 9 says. For the eyes of the Lord, okay, they run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. God wants to show himself strong on our behalf. And this is something that the Apostle Paul, he understood, and he believed this. He knew that God wanted to move in a mighty way in the body of Christ, in the church. Paul knew that, and this is something that he addressed. I'm, I'm going to ask you guys to turn to Philippians chapter 2. And as you're turning there, just be mindful of this, that the Apostle Paul right here, he's going to address the importance of unity. Okay, and as you're turning there, be mindful of this other thing. Paul is writing to the church. He's writing to believers like you and me. And listen, listen, listen. Um, so turn there if you, if in your Bibles, chapter two, and this is what he says in chapter two, verses one through five. Remember, he's writing to believers here. He says, "Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ." Right? If any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I love that. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. See, verses three and four, right, right there, they describe to us how can we achieve this unity? How can, how can we practice this unity in our lives, right? Right? Paul understood that if self-ambition, guys, if conceit, if pride, if that was to creep into the church, he knew that there was going to be a hindrance in the way the Lord was going to use the church, the way God wanted to use the church. You see, there is um, the power of God. It is hindered when there is lack of unity in the church. The power of God is hindered when there is lack of unity in the church. I don't know about you guys, man. But I'm tired of seeing 15-year-old boys die in our streets because of gang violence. I'm tired, man. This is happening way too much, right? And I believe with all my heart that if we, as a body of believers here at Hope Alive Church, if we are united in one mind, if we are united in one spirit, if we are united in one love, right, we're going to make a difference, we're going to start making a difference. See, I understand and I realize, you know, Paul was writing to the church here, but he knew that the body of Christ needed each other. There needed to be a unity. Guys, we need you guys. The Lord wants to use you guys, right? But for whatever reason, a lot of times it seems like we feel like, oh man, like Pastor Tommy sometimes shares, they're going to do that. No, God wants to use us as a body here, right? It takes faith. Yes, we understand that. It takes availability, but it also sometimes takes sacrifice. It sometimes takes sacrifice, guys. When we begin to understand in our hearts, right here as a body at Hope Alive Church, if our hearts begin to get knitted together, right, 
Man, we're going to end up having that mind of Christ. Think about that. Think about if a body of believers had the mind of Christ in everything they did. Oh, man, we would begin to see the Lord do miracles like we wouldn't even, we would be tripping out. We would be like, man, did you guys see what God did? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you guys. At times, me and Pastor Tommy, we're at these high schools and we get to see a lot of these miracles that God is doing. Do you guys know that it's a miracle that a little youngster will surrender their life to Jesus? That's a miracle. So I just want to encourage you guys. Right now, we're going to take this time. We're going to pray for unity. We're going to pray that God begins to, to knit our hearts together here at Hope Alive Church. I'm going to pray that you may, by, the, by next week, that you may know 10 names of different people you never knew. Oh, that's homeboy right there. Because sometimes we, we put names to people, right? Well, just the way they look. Oh, that's such and such. That's such and such. No, we need to start getting to know people. We need to because, guys, there is work. Do you guys believe that there is work for us to do? There's work for us to do, and God, this is the this is truth. I don't know why God wants to use us. God wants to use us, guys. So right now, I want to encourage you guys want, with, with this attitude of prayer that we have, pray for unity. Pray for unity in the body of Christ, right? So um, we're going to take this next time, this, uh, this next couple minutes, and we're just going to seek the Lord and ask him just to unite our hearts together. Amen? Okay, so right now, if you can turn just the way you were, like Pastor George said, no more than six. Um, if you prayed with certain people, let's, let's practice unity. So let's pray with other people. Let's get out of our comfort zones and go pray with somebody we never even said hi to. And watch what God's going to do. All right, so let's pray for unity. Colossians in chapter number three. And I find it interesting that... Um, you know, I didn't tell George or Gabriel what portion of scripture I wanted them to be in or to speak out of. And I just find it interesting that we all kind of are, are just looking to an epistle. You know, one where the apostle Paul is, is writing to the church, to the churches, from writing to the Ephesians, writing to the Philippians there in Philippi, and here writing to the church there in Colossae. And in all these instances, we see that the Apostle Paul is writing, you know, this really, what he's teaching, he's, he's writing a teaching. He's writing to teach the church what to do, how to behave, and, and you know, how to seek the Lord. And I, and I love it because, you know, this is what we're doing. We're still doing this. Where we're still learning, okay, he, as Paul was saying to these different churches, this is how you behave. This is what you do. This is what you don't do. And this, because of this is, again, I want, I want to say it like this. We don't do these things because we do these things now in replace of what we once did. You see, and so Paul, in all these instances, is, is writing to the churches for this matter, as well as in chapter number three here in Colossae. And I want to, I'm going to go through this, and again, I'm going to get as much in as I possibly can. Chapter number three, verse number one. Now watch this. I want us, you know, have your pens ready, because I'm going to ask you to highlight and circle some things here. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ who is your, uh, when Christ who is your life appears, amen, say, is Christ your life? How, man, Christ has to be our life. So when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. And so, guys, real quick, you know, Paul, again, he's writing to the church, and he's saying, hey, guys, your minds are set on something else. Set your minds. He says, you know, begin to seek those things which are above. You guys are seeking the things that are here on this earth. Begin to seek the things that are above. And he says, and also and including just seeking, he says, set your mind on. Set your mind on the things of God. It's, we all know what that's like to, to set something. We all set our alarm clocks, don't you? 
Yes, the other day I set my alarm clock to get up early in the morning, but I, I didn't set it for a.m. I set it for p.m. And so when I'm getting the phone call, hey, I'm outside to pick you up, I'm like, oh my God, what happened? It's like, my alarm clock. You see, I didn't set my alarm clock correctly. And it's the same thing with us, to set our minds on heaven, on the things that are above. You know, to set them on God, because that's where our minds and our hearts should be set. Or in other words, cemented in. Our minds, you know, cemented in the things of God and and the things that we're seeking are the things of God. And look at verse number five. We're going to go through this. Therefore, he says, therefore, put to death the members which are on earth. And notice what he says. Put to death the members that are on earth. And he mentions fornication, uncleanliness, and passion. These first three things here is the idea of sexual immorality, all three of them. Fornication, uncleanliness, and passion. He says, also to put to death evil desires and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. And so he says, guys, the church there in Colossae, your guys, your minds are set here and you're seeking these things. Put all of those things, you know, your things of the world, Put them on God and put to death those, the, the ways of life. Some of us have ways of life here today in this building that need to be put to death because you're still seeking, you're still engaging in things or in ways of life that you ought not to. Whatever it is, it can be fornication, it can be pornography, it can be in a relationship that you shouldn't be in, it can be just covetous in your own heart and jealousies and all these things. And here God is saying, Paul, the apostles, telling the church, put those things to death, put those things off, okay? And he says, and you know what they are because, well, that's what God's called you out of. God has called you out of that so you don't do that no more because we get to do something differently. Oftentimes, Christianity is is thought of as a, a way of, or a thing, or a religion where I can't do, or I don't do. And Christianity is not filled with a bunch of, I don't do no more. It's more, it should be, we should look at Christianity as I get to do now. I don't do this because now I do this. I don't hang out in the streets and get high and all this other stuff because now I like to go to church, because now I like to go to prayer meetings, because now I like to go and serve the Lord, because now I like to be with my family and make memories with my family rather than you know, having my family be over here and me over here. You see, so it's more of I get to do now. And Paul is saying, hey, put these things to death and you all know what they are. But now, verse 8, but now you yourselves are to put off all these things, okay? Put off the anger, the the wrath, the, the malice, the blasphemy, the filthy language out of our mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. Guys, he's saying, that that's not the person we are no more. You know, we, we're saved. Because of what Jesus has done on the cross, I believe that we're all here because, man, God has done something in our lives, and I know that God's calling me to be here. Hey, listen, I hope and, and, and pray that, that we just don't act like we're saved, but, you know, it's like that basically when I say act, like it's just an act, like it's just something that, it's a pretend thing, but it's something you are. Salvation, Christianity, this is who I am. I'm sorry. That's just who I am. You can't tell me not to pray, you know? I remember one time I was asked to go and, you know, just go up there, and we were, we were a part of this big old giant concert stuff, you know, and, you know, teaming up with, uh, I don't know, a bunch of different programs and ministries, whatever, you know? And, and so we're getting ready to go and start the thing off, and just like how I always do, I go and start it off with prayer, right? And so I go up there, and I just begin to pray, and at the end of the prayer, and I said, in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. And as I turned around at the, off the stage, there was like people with little earphones and clipboards like, no, you cannot pray. I'm like, okay. Because I was going to go back up there and pray again. They said, do not pray in the name of Jesus. <laughs> but I don't know what else to do. All right, you know, whatever, dude. You know, five minutes later, I go back up there and pray. 
And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Sorry, I can't. That's who I am. You see, this is who we are. And here, you know, Paul is, or, yeah, Paul is saying to the church there in Colossae, um, since you have put off the old man with its deeds, let's be real in our Christianity. Not fake, not phony, right? But genuine, authentic. And when I say not fake, not phony, but genuine and authentic, I'm not saying that you have to be perfect. Because <laughs> none of us are. We are not perfect. And he says, and to put on. So we don't put off. You see, it's not just a bunch of don'ts. It's like put off the old, but now we put on the new. He says, put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who is created by him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian or say, um, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Amen. It's all about Christ. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on. Now watch this, guys. Here, I want you to circle these. Verse number 12. Put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. Oh, man. So, long-suffering can be difficult to, to deal with at times, can it? I don't know about you, but I, I drive in Southern California traffic. And that's one place I feel like I struggle in where I have no long suffering. I want to sit on my horn, do the lights green. And I know that's probably what people do sometimes with me when I'm at that red light. And I pay, you know, wake up. I'm thankful for my daughter. She's like green. You know, it's like, oh, I'm going. <laughs> but you see the long suffering. Patience. You know, we, we, we need this with one another. In the church, we need to exercise this kind of long-suffering. Notice he says, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do forgiveness. God here is saying we need to exercise forgiveness just as Christ has forgiven us. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in the body, and be thankful. Circle this verse number 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly and in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. Look at there. It's teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So guys, we're going to pray right now. And I pray that just as we were told right there in verse number 16, that well, first of all, that our hearts would be knit in the bond of God's love, but that we would be ministering to one another in songs, in hymns, and just pouring out your heart, seeking, for, seeking God for one another, interceding for one another. And let's do it all to the glory of God. And, then, and I also want to encourage you and invite you, if you feel like you want to come and get communion right now, you want to just you know, depart from your little prayer group because you want to have communion, I want you to and feel free, come and get these communion elements. They're right here. They're for you to commune, for you to commune with God. Amen? And I will be over here at these communion ta tables. And so, Father, I pray that you would help us to engage in this time of prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. And so, guys, go ahead and get in our groups right now, and we're going to um, pray. Pray hard. Seek the Lord. Amen?